This is my last edition as host of Reliable Sources after 15 years in this chair. I was part of a pilot for the program back when Bill Clinton was first running for president. He was mired in the Monica Lewinsky scandal when I took over the host role, and I haven't missed a show since then, my own personal Cal Ripken streak. Here's what the program looked like right after the controversial House vote. The morning after. The media have an impeached president. Welcome to Reliable Sources, where we turn a critical lens on the media. We've been hearing from readers and viewers all year that we have overcovered this. One of our most dramatic programs came in the aftermath of the 2000 elections, when the networks called Florida for Al Gore and then for George W. Bush. Sam Donaldson, ABC, and the other networks were wrong twice in the most dramatic, high-profile way imaginable, jerking the country around and the candidates as well. How could this have happened? Well, no one's happy about it. We have egg on our face, no question about it. We made a mistake. Uh, we were wrong. Uh, we were just flat wrong. In 2003, I exposed the serial fabrications of Jason Blair at the New York Times, and later asked him how he felt when I called him about the first of those lies, a plagiarized piece about a Texas woman whose son was missing in Iraq and whom he had never visited. How did you think, uh, when you were doing it, that you could copy the quotes from this woman, that you could use details like her Martha Stewart patio furniture, which as it turned out was still in boxes, which you didn't know because you hadn't gone there, and not get caught? I mean, it just seems like so, uh, so risky in addition to everything else. Well, you know, some people say it was an unconscious cry for help. I don't know. This program has always been about asking difficult questions regardless of ideology. After Barack Obama was elected in 2008, as most of the media was celebrating the new president, we were skeptical about the coverage. The history and the hype. Did some journalists get carried away during Barack Obama's election victory? Is there a danger that all this will be seen as some kind of love fest involving the media? Sure, there's a danger it's being said that way al already. Over the years, I've had the chance to interview people from Tim Russert to John Stewart, from George Clooney to Hugh Hefner, from Rush Limbaugh to Whoopi Goldberg, not to mention Katie Couric, Diane Sawyer, Brian Williams, Ted Koppel, and Barbara Walters. There was no Facebook or Twitter or iPhones or iPads when I became the host back in 1998. And as we've evolved, we've tried to reflect the changing nature of the news business. I'm very grateful to CNN for the opportunity to build this franchise and to all of you for watching over the years as we've tackled the tough journalistic issues during wars and terror attacks and presidential campaigns and various media frenzies. The first-rate staff here is what has made this program, most recently under senior producer Hardy Spire, and we have not shied away from controversy, including on those occasions when we've criticized CNN. I am moving on to become an analyst for Fox News and create a new media program there. There's already been some sniping from people who don't like Fox, but I haven't changed, and I'll be continuing my independent brand of media criticism. As for CNN, I'm happy to report that reliable sources will continue with the full support of Turner Broadcasting Chairman Phil Kent and Chief Executive Jeff Zucker. Jeff has been exciting to work for and very gracious about this transition. I want to wish the network that's been my home for more than two decades all the best. So for the last time, thanks for watching as we turn a critical lens on the media. I'm Howard.